This video is sponsored by Noom. Hello and welcome to my channel. So the great thing about social media and sometimes the overwhelming thing, but it's that you are constantly aware of the questions that are on people's minds and the conversations that are happening over a wide range of topics. I say that it's great because I think it's a good idea to be in the know with what people are worried about and with what they're talking about, especially in the line of work that I'm in. It helps to kind of have your ear to the ground and to understand what makes people tick. And sometimes that gets overwhelming, all those different perspectives and concerns clashing together all the time. In fact, there has been a recent call for certain conversations to stop completely. Certain concerns, we don't wanna hear about it anymore. Especially when we talk about concerns that happen within the black community, such as, um, I don't know, who's paying on a $200 date. If you ride in the car and your husband and your you have a wife there and you also have a mom who sits in the front seat, who gets served first if you go to a buffet type situation and you are a woman, is it your husband or your son? Are you too masculine to be loved? Are you too feminine to be loved? There's tons of conversations that are happening all the time on podcasts everywhere that people are in generally tired of talking about. But I think one conversation that sort of crosses over a bunch of different cultural and ethnic backgrounds is the conversation about wifehood and whether or not being a wife and staying at home and taking care of your family or being a wife who goes out in the world and has a corporate job or just any job that requires her to be out of the home is the right type of wife to be. Now for the record, I don't think there is a right type of wife to be. I think it's very much based on your situation and what works best for you. But since when has that type of thinking ever stopped people from coming together on social media? Usually what happens is this, someone is living their life, walking along their path, and someone else comes along and they say, well, hey, I'm doing this over here. Why aren't you doing what I'm doing? Or someone is just minding their business and someone says, hey, I don't like what you're doing. And that person feels the need to say, well, why not? It's better than what you're doing. And they go back and forth ad nauseum. That's what I feel has happened with this debate, the debate between the stay at home domestic engineer and the modern woman. And it is starting to become one of those things that I'm sick of hearing about. And so in this video, I wanted to talk about where it started, why I think it's so important, like why it's such a great concern, and finally, my overall opinion. Before I get started though, I would like to thank the sponsors of today's video, Noom. So before I get into talking about the roles that someone may or may not fulfill within a relationship to somebody else, I think it's important to start with the relationship we have with ourselves. And that is why I was excited to partner with Noom for this video. Noom is a consumer-led digital platform that leverages a powerful combination of human coaches, psychology, and behavioral science to help people take control of their own health. Noom believes that health doesn't start at the doctor's office, it starts with you at your home. Noom helps you learn why you make the decisions that you make, because learning is what leads to real lasting change. So you start off by taking a quiz and just answering some questions that are related to your mental health or your weight loss goals and then Noom creates a program for you in order to help you reach those goals. They have food and exercise trackers that you can use daily. You can track your weight, your water intake, your glucose levels, and your blood pressure. So I'm recent to starting to use Noom. And so um, when I first signed up, I gave them a goal and it said that I am on track to complete my goal by February of 2023. And so since I am a recent user, I've completed about maybe 1% of that goal so far, but I do enjoy the process of being able to log in, look at my steps, look at how much, uh, look at what my calorie intake is for the day. And I think that those kind of steps are important when it comes to accountability and staying on track in order to make those physical changes. If you are also looking to build a better relationship with your health, whether it be your physical health or your mental health, you're looking to better monitor your sleeping habits, your energy habits, your overall emotional health, then I definitely would suggest Noom as something to try out. If you would like to try it, please click on the link below. Or you can go to noom.com backslash ostefco to take your free Noom evaluation. So like I said, you're on social media and you're scrolling through and you're constantly being bombarded with information and concerns and perspectives and a lot of times different conversations and debates. And one of the things I think outside of just what kind of wife you wanna be and what kind of wife you can be one day, I think, or what kind of wife you are, I think that it, there's a real, real obsession with the concept of marriage in general. And I don't think that this obsession is for no reason. I think that based on the 
religious indoctrination and the different values of the various cultures that make up the United States population. I think that marriage is a concept and a social status that many people are taught to want to achieve and are looked down on for not being able to achieve within a certain amount of time. And that's for a couple of reasons. The first reason is marriage is at its root, or at, at least at its origin, marriage was a financial institution. It was a way for two people to come together and pool resources and develop the right type of foundation that they would need to go into their adult lives. That's why you have the history of things like the dowry or why you have bride prices. The ability to show that this union will be fortuitous financially is an age old tradition. I also think marriage is important socially to a lot of different social groups. You have you know, certain social groups that say you should not have children or you should not have a family unless you are in a partnership. You have certain social groups who say a partnership needs to look like this. Both partners need to come from this background. They need to have this understanding of a certain culture. I am a fan, I've mentioned it before, of the show Indian Matchmaking and I know a lot of people did find the first season of that show problematic because of the way that it represented the practice. Um, there were some observations that it maybe whitewashed the practice a little bit or that it ignored the negative sides of the practice. But I think overall, what I took away from it as a person who didn't really have a higher network working for me, didn't really have a higher network of people looking out and saying, hey, uh, where's her bio data? We've got a man in this city who matches her, we're gonna fly her out, meet with his family, we're gonna, you know, I think the idea of having an entire community that's working together to see you and someone else come together in a union, to me, that's an incredibly powerful thing. And so from the outside looking in, I was like, okay, I see what y'all saying, you know, why it might not be nice, but it's kind of nice. And I think that a lot of cultures do look at marriage that way. It's not just, you know, two people coming together and pooling their income or agreeing to enter society together on a specific income status, but it's two people coming together to continue the practices of a specific culture. And so I think that young people who a lot of times have been told about this over and over again and have seen these practices have been, you know, told to be involved in weddings and have viewed weddings and this person's getting married and that and their whole lives. I think once they get to that age, which I'm gonna say is from about 18 to 35, it definitely becomes a top of the mind obsession. I would say that for some people, marriage and getting your domestic situation in order is even more important than your career. And I think specifically within that group of people, you have women because traditionally, women have been expected to carry the crux of what happens within the domestic atmosphere. And those that choose to not be that worried about it, those that choose to make their focus elsewhere, specifically, you know, out in the world at their corporate jobs, you know, accomplishing their dreams in that realm, sometimes they are looked down on or they're criticized. And I think they turn that criticism around on people who are doing the opposite from them. But we'll get back to that in a second. But I've seen this conversation happen between women who say, you know what, I wanna be out in the world. I don't need to just be focused on my marriage and what happens in my home. I also have a right to have my hands and feet into what is happening in the world. And you have women who say, no, I would like to be at home. And I am reducing this conversation to things that happen within heteronormative marriages and practices, because that's a lot of where I see the conversation turning into an argument or into a debate. I think if you're already in a situation where you are practicing something outside of that when it comes to your particular domestic union, I think that you're already sort of three or five steps ahead, you know, when it comes to uh, what your role should be within that situation. So I will be saying, you know, women, and, and I will be concerning myself with women who are married to men in this particular video. But moving on, let's for a second, go and take a look at the side of women who treasure above all else, the role of the traditional wife. These women in their extreme call themselves trad wives. Now, not every woman who chooses to stay at home and be a stay at home wife um, and prefers that is a trad wife. Like I said, trad wives are kind of the extreme of this perspective. And mainly what they are proponents of is returning back to the reality of yesteryear. They do not want to have to be worried about getting a nine to five job outside of the household. 
They want their job to be submitting to their husband, being taken care of financially by whatever he brings into the home and rearing and raising their children and doing everything that is involved with being inside of the home. A lot of times trad wives will also take a theatrical bent to what they're doing, meaning they will dress up in certain ways, they will do their hair certain ways. And what they're really looking to do is to imitate the reality of the 1950s housewife as they understand it, specifically as it was presented in television shows and in advertisements of that time. So I wanna make something clear that's very clear to me as I'm editing this, but was not something that I came across and I don't know how, cause the information on this is abundant online. But the trad wives movement is clearly very white. And some even say that it has links to white supremacy or to the alt-right movement. Here's why. In the article, The Housewives of White Supremacy that appeared in the New York Times, the author Annie Kelly states that the trad wives movement was initially brought about by the alt-right movement, by men within the alt-right movement, as a way of getting more women to want to vote for their cause. Specifically, a man named Marcus Fallen, who is a Swedish nationalist, he calls himself the golden one on YouTube, and he made a video titled The Women Question, where he was trying to tell his viewers, hey, we need to dial down the misogyny. We need to be more open to women if we want their votes. We may not like the right that women can vote or that women have the right to vote. We may not like that, but we still need that in order to be able to take over. And as a result, they figured out, well, we can advertise this side of being a woman to women. And we know that they will want to um, jump into it because it is attractive to them in some way. And I don't know why this didn't jump out at me before, but yeah, as I was looking through these images, I was like, this movement is so white. And um, that it, it, it's clear that it does have some darker roots in certain parts of it. And I also wanna say that when people talk about going back to a simpler time, um, in order for them to really idealize that time, they do have to completely invalidate and ignore the history of other wives in this country, specifically wives of color who have usually always worked outside of the home because their financial realities were different, especially when you talk about black women and their roles as wives. And so um, anyway, I wanted to share that really quickly. I will link this article below. People who are supporters of this movement say that it is the rightful place of women to be in the home and to be serving in this role. Um, it allows women to completely step into their natural position as caregivers and people who have maternal instincts. And since it's what we're naturally called to do, then not doing it says a lot about you as a woman. And that is what you really should be inspecting. I, I've heard this. I've heard that said online. In fact, some trad wives go as far as to say that feminism ruined women's lives because it separated women from their true calling, which is to be in the home and to be submissive and to serve their husband and their children. And I'm not gonna lie, I do see a lot of where they're coming from. I do understand the desire to want to recoil from the demands of the workplace. I do think that even though we have made incredible strides when it comes to women um, in the corporate workplaces and beyond, there are still challenges that women do face, especially when women decide to become mothers and are raising a family at the same time. Yes, the only real job I've had has been being an educator, but even in that position where, you know, you're supposed to have all this great work-life balance and you get off, you know, early in the afternoon so you can go be with your kids, I would look at my fellow teachers who had children and I would just be like, how, how are you doing this? How are you here all day with these kids? And then you go home to your own kids. There would be some days where I would be so exhausted after teaching that I would come home and I would just sit in the dark for an hour or two. I had nothing else to give. And I could not imagine getting off of work and having to entertain and be there for my children as well, or go pick them up or take them to their various activities. Um, that is a level of energy that I just did not have. So I can understand people being like, if a woman is gonna raise a family, she needs to be in the home. I, I do see that. I also see economically where people are coming from with this. Listen, um, it is great to be able to go out and to make your own salary and to be the master of your own finances, but that does take a lot of work and it does take a lot of um, ability to navigate a very nuanced 
career path. Some people get really lucky and they get placed into situations where they're naturally making a lot of money. Some people have to go through and they have to do the networking and they have to be educated and they have to, you know, really work on climbing that ladder by themselves and then climbing that ladder as women where they are maybe going to run into some discrimination and some more obstacles than they would run into if they were a man. So I can see someone saying, hey, you know what? Check, please. I would like to have somebody else do that for me. Bring me the money. I'll take care of the home. Um, I think one time a stay at home mom put it for me like this. I take care of the thrills. He's got the bills. And I could not be mad at that. I understand the thinking behind that situation. However, here's what I feel that people who completely support that, here's what I feel that they they ignore, especially when you're talking about the trad wives movement and their attitudes on feminism. So one thing that people have pointed out, and I do agree, is that a lot of times when they glorify and you know want to edify the 1950s housewife in that time of life, what they're not understanding is that was a caricature created by advertising companies to sell products. That person and that happy-go-lucky, you know, I'm wearing pearls, I'm doing this and that, I, I find so much joy and vacuuming my house in heels and making my husband's dinner and then sort of just devoting the rest of my life to cleaning all day, that person may have not really existed. And if we go by historical records at the time, specifically the mental health practices of women back then who were fulfilling those roles, I would go ahead and say she didn't really exist at all. In fact, it is documented that women back then were very, very dependent on a number of psychiatric medications if their mental health was taken seriously at all. Things like anxiety, depression, um, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, postpartum issues, if they were treated seriously by a doctor at all, they were sometimes over-treated and women were encouraged to take a number of pills in order to get them into the right mindset to be able to perform this job that was supposed to be everything they dreamed of and more. Women also were known for their drinking habits back in these days and the smoking habits, just basically doing a lot of things that it would appear acted as numbing agents to numb them from the reality of this life that they were being asked to live. You also have to look at the fact that there was a lot of violence that happened within those homes. There were sexual assaults that happened against these women by their husbands and you know you can say well they were married how is an assault if she doesn't consent to the action if it's something she doesn't want if it happens against her will it is assault there were domestic violence situations and those were for the most part encouraged to be things that people kept as a private family matter and it wasn't until the female liberation movement of the 60s and the 70s that women finally were able to gain some protection under the law in fact when it came to divorce and the laws around divorce and no fault divorces were introduced suicide rates of women who were living those lives went down about 20%. So I think when we talk about that time of life and we talk about, you know, the fact that leaving it was in some way a death of something beautiful and special, I think people are ignoring the fact that a lot of women did want something more, which is why they sought careers and lives outside of just being these agents of the homes, these Stepford wives that only existed to bring a smile to their husband and their children's faces. Women want it to be more because we are more. And that is where the modern working everyday woman comes from. And I think at, at the end of the day, even if she is exhausted, even if she is exhausted, a lot of people take a lot of pride in their work and in the fact that they've built themselves up into three dimensional individuals. Me personally speaking, even though I feel like I'm, I'm out of the window of people who have to have this conversation, I'm kind of only having it because I know people talk about it. If we talk about the realities of being not necessarily just a trad wife, but a stay at home wife in general, I think that position is very transactional. You have to be offering something to earn the right for somebody to want to pay all your bills and completely take care of you, or at least that's how my brain works. For example, you have to be raising this person's children. You have to be cooking all of this person's meals. You have to be keeping this house a certain way. And so I think for me, who's never, you know, I just made my first banana bread a few weeks ago. I'm, I'm not a chef. Um, I'm now older, I'm to the age where you couldn't necessarily marry me and expect us to have five children together. I think for me, I don't qualify anymore as somebody who would be given that status. So when it comes to this conversation, I'm like, oh, that's definitely not even the type of marriage that I would even have access to at this point in my life. And that's fine with me because I never wanted it. It always made me very, very 
weary. It always made me very weary to think about being completely dependent on someone else's income to live my life, especially if I was capable. And even more so, it scares me to one day not be capable and to have to be dependent on somebody else. So um, I always thought of it as a way that this person could control me. And in fact, a lot of lawyers and things that jump into these conversations when they're happening online, a lot of times they will say, hey, it's fine if you wanna be a stay-at-home person, um, completely dependent on someone else for your bills and you know your your basic financial needs but always have a backup plan because they see it time and time again where somebody lives this life and they are supported financially and they they aren't in control of their own life in that way and then the relationship ends and they're left with nothing and they have to rebuild and uh, for me i guess that's always what i was afraid of um to almost a um it just a really aggressive extent. I didn't want to give somebody that power over me. So I always was like, I want to work outside the home, period. Yeah, so now that I'm completely outside of the conversation, like I, I, I don't think I qualify as a stay at home wife anymore. It's fine because I wouldn't want to fill that role. But I will say this, I think with the way that life has expanded, and I think with the way that work at home has become a reality for so many different people, I think that it's a fantastic thing for women to be able to work from home, to be able to make their own money, to be able to impact the world, but at the same time, if they so choose, have those relationships with their children, perform those domestic abilities, and not have to go outside of their door. I think that's great for anybody, actually. Working from home is fantastic, <laughs> but I especially see that for working mothers. I know working mothers who you know, they teach online. And at the same time, they've been able to take care of their very infant children during a very, very crucial part of that child's life. And they've been able to watch their children grow up while they work from home. That's been an incredible blessing for them. I also will say this, when you talk about stay at home situations that really work out for me, I look at people who have extremely supportive partners who don't feel that domestic responsibilities have to fall within specific gender roles. So you have a man who comes home from his job and he's like, okay, have the kids been bathed? Is dinner ready? If not, I'll start it. If not, I'll bring it home. You have two people who understand the realities of what needs to happen inside of a home. And I think that is oftentimes the most successful situation because I see women, you know, get on social media and they'll be in tears. We call it weaponized incompetence, or that's what I've seen um, it called when you have a man who's like, well, I just don't know how to do those things because I'm a man. And they're able to get away with not cleaning up, not tending to the kids, not getting up at night. And the woman is exhausted. So um, I really think that you know what the answer comes down to if you're if that's going to be a successful situation for you you know yourself and so having the right kind of partner that's going to make that easier for you because sometimes i think it's it's it is a good solution for a family especially when like childcare can cost as much as a someone's salary so they basically go out and work only to make money to pay for childcare so i can see ways that it works i can see ways that it's a positive environment and a positive solution for some people. However, when it comes to it being an argument, when it comes to it being a debate back and forth, that's where I kind of am like, I sort of raise an eyebrow because why do we, why is this a debate? <laughs> you know what works for you, do what works for you. That's it. If what works for you doesn't work for somebody else, Oh, well. Now, I do want to say that I now that I've discovered kind of like the alt-right intentions of the Trad Wives movement, I do want to say that I think at the heart of it turning into a debate on social media is because of a political agenda in some in some ways. Um, also, people want to grow their audiences. People want to, you know, develop whatever personal business or, you know, side hustle or side agenda that they have going on. So it turning into a debate or a conversation is a lot, it has a lot more to do with people just being contrary for no reason. It's, and they, there's usually an agenda behind it. When you see somebody consistently stating, hey, this is what I do, this is who I am. And then when they go on the defensive, you know, well, if you don't do things like me, then you must be, that's when you kind of have to question like, okay, what is this person's real agenda? Is it just to show off their life and who they are? Or are they trying to convert people to do something? Are they trying to, you know, do they have a greater, a greater job in mind here? 
And um, again, after reading what I read, I was like, oh, so some people are literally trying to convert people and bring them into a certain political way of thinking. And then you just have to be very aware of who you allow to talk to and what kind of media you ingest. But before I recorded this, I did not know that that part of this existed. I literally thought it was like very conventional women who thought that they would raise their children in certain ways, living their life. And then women who wanted to do it another way, living their life. And then these two people arguing for silly little reasons online. I had no idea that there was a whole political movement behind it. I had like, I, my eyes have really been opened since making and recording this video. So I just want to get that out there. It's definitely not just a conversation. If it's if you see it happening online, it's usually because someone has some kind of an agenda, especially when you talk about like the trad wives movement in particular. The problem I do see though is when you have individuals who are part of the trad wife movement who view feminism as a terrible choice for society and who say really derogatory things about a movement that really did liberate a lot of women from a situation that was extremely detrimental to their physical, their mental, and their financial health. And I think when people from that movement are being openly obtuse online, um, that's when I have no problem with people responding and being like, hey, hey, cut all that out. But I think if you're content in your choice and you're like, hey, this is what works for me, and so that's why I do it, I think that you should just be content. Now, I don't think that at any time the conversation around marriage is going to stop. I think um, no matter how modern we say the world is, we have and are powered by traditions that are so old and so ancient. And I also think that there is something spiritual to wanting to join together with another person and go out in this world with them. But I do think when it comes to the concept of being a wife and being the right kind of wife, I think that that will be a conversation that will change and will look different based on the generation of people who is having it. And as a result, in 20 years, it'll probably look even different than it looks now. Who knows? So how about you? What are your opinions about this? Do you have any opinions at all? Have you seen people going back and forth about this online? Is it something that worries you? Or are you just like, I'm just gonna mind my business? Again, like I said, in the line of work that I'm in, it pays to pay attention to what people are talking about, even though, especially with this situation, it actually doesn't affect me at all because <laughs> I, there's nothing further from my reality than, than being a housewife at this time. But it is interesting to me because it is a conversation that women are having. And um, I don't like to see women kind of tearing each other down online for any reason. So anyway, feel free to chime in below and tell me your thoughts. And as always, thanks for watching.